Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. A little over a year ago, I wrote an article about using the serialized field attribute in trying to give a good example of how it can save you from a big mistake. So this is the article right here, but I just wanted to do a video and kind of explain it and do a more visual presentation of this information. So here I've set up a car. There's a body and then I've got four little points for where the tires will go. This is just like a race car game with maybe some dynamic tire selection or something like that. So if I hit play, you'll see the um, tires should just appear there. I've got front tires that are smaller and rear tires that are a little bit bigger. Down here I've got the prefabs for these two different tires and there's only one field on them and it's just a tread value. So the front tires have five, the back tires have ten. You can imagine this is like just wears over time, tires die, and you have to put on new tires. So maybe the player can select different tires, upgrade their car, or something like that. And here you can see the tires are instantiated, and then in the code I'm just dropping them onto these four different positions. So this is cool, but let me show you the code and what the problems we can run into are. So here I've set it up with a car that's got some front tires and rear tires. These are the definitions for what those tires are going to be. These are the actual instances of those tires. So the front left, front right, uh, rear right and rear left. And then here are the positions. And you can see I've set these all up as just public fields. There's no serialized field attribute yet. And um, it all just kind of works, right? Like I instantiate some tires. Front right tires just instantiate from the front tire prefab. Same with the front left, and here we go. Just kind of scroll right through. Do the same for the rear, and then um, here we just set the positions. This is just to put them in there so that it's visually a little bit more appealing. And if we look at the object in the scene, you see right here, we have the two prefabs. We have the tires that are going to be filled in eventually, and then we have the positions. So for my example, I just used a wall, but it's kind of a fake wall. I click on the fire button, and um, which would be like left click. And you just imagine that this is the player hitting a wall and say that when they hit a wall, I wanna damage all of their tires. So right here, I just call get button down, fire one. So if I click, uh, we damage whatever car there is. So I just find the only car. We could cache this, but so this is just an example of bad stuff. So in the damage car method, we call car.fronttires.tread minus equals one and car dot rear tires dot tread minus equals one. So imagine we just wanted to subtract one from each of the tire values. Now you may already notice the issue here, but coming in as a new developer on a project that's much bigger and has more than this 20 lines of code, it may be a lot harder to, to recognize it. So let's just hit play and see what's gonna happen. I just pull my game view over once this starts up. So there we go, let's go side by side. So now when I click here, I'm gonna select this tire and click, and I see that nothing's happening. Right? This, the tread isn't going down on any of these tires. And the reason for that, watch when I look at these prefabs, these prefab values are actually dropping instead. And that's because in my code in the car, I have the front tires here and the rear tires. They're actually, remember, the prefab instances, but they're publicly exposed and totally editable. So there's nothing that would stop me from changing these and actually screwing up my prefabs. So you can have a programmer come in, trying to help out adding some functionality and then um, accidentally screw up all your prefabs at the same time just by referencing a variable that's supposed to be a prefab, but it isn't really encapsulated and hidden. So it's accessible from any code and any code can go in and modify that prefab. So let's see how we would change this to make it a little bit better. So if I go into the car, the first thing I would do is just add the serialized field attribute here. So a serialized field and serialized field right there. And then I would make these private. And watch when, when I build, you're gonna see all of a sudden we've got two errors because these tires are no longer accessible from the code, right? They're accessible inside the car. The car can read them and the car can use them to instantiate things, but we can't um, edit them from outside. So the wall that's trying to damage them can't accidentally damage the wrong thing. So now I would know like, okay, I need to go to front right tire and do front left tire. 
just like this. And then I'd also need to do the um, rear right and the rear left. So now the code is fixed and I'm no longer able to make that mistake, right? Which I think helps a lot. It, it, like I said, it avoids possible problems in the future. There's one other thing I would do too, which is just change this tread. Right now the tread is just a um, public int field. And if I were gonna set this up for real, what I would do instead is copy that and I'd make a private version. I'd make a private int tread with a lowercase t and make that serialized field. And then here in the tire, I just make this a getter and a setter so it's a public property so it doesn't show up in the inspector and we know that it's not supposed to and then in the awake method i do like private void awake and i'd set the tread equal to tread and in fact i'd probably rename this to um starting tread or max tread or something like that so that it's more obvious what it is and then um i'm kind of stopping myself from being able to edit the prefab value at all or break the prefab, right? So now when I click, of course, since I fixed the code, oh wait, here, I renamed the um, the field here. So front tires would have to be back to five and rear tires to 10. Save again, press play. And now when I click, you'll see that I'm no longer edit, modifying the wrong thing. I'm modifying, let's see, I should be modifying the actual tires. I click. Oh, I am modifying the tires, but starting tread isn't the tread amount. So let's actually, um, uh, uh, what I'm gonna do is just put a breakpoint in here and we'll just modify it and then we'll watch. So right here, breakpoint, and you see that the tread is going down. Again, we could also have a private field that's visible in debug mode, something like that to see it, but I think this is probably sufficient. So tread was five on there. Now it's down to four. There we go. So this kind of hopefully explains one of the many, many reasons for encapsulation and keeping your things private whenever necessary or whenever possible. And then um, only exposing things to extra classes when it's absolutely necessary is that it just avoids accidental misuse. And then that accidental misuse you know, can cause all kinds of other problems. I've seen this in small projects. I've seen this in huge projects where people just didn't really know that they weren't supposed to use a property or a field in a specific way. And it wasn't private when it really should have been and it would have avoided a lot of pain. So I hope this helps somebody. You know, like I said, just keep everything private unless it needs to be public. Use serialized field. Um, and then if you like this video, of course, don't forget to like and hit subscribe. If you have questions about this though, like I said, drop a comment below. Um, I'd love to hear more other opinions on this stuff, but like I said, I think that this is the way to go. So thanks for watching.